Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again to talk about Sterling engines. You say, well, you've covered these engines in one of your other videos, and I say, no, uh, but I've covered some that look just about the same. However, they're a little bit smaller. This is the one that we talked about in one other video and will not be discussed now. The other ones are slightly larger and this will be the topic of the discussion today. The two engines that I'm showing you here now are really pretty much the same, although one is air-cooled and one is water-cooled. This is the air-cooled engine. It's similar to the other ones that I've showed you. And By air-cooled, I mean that it's, the air passes it over and the heat is dissipated in that manner and some of it's conducted down into the aluminum base to, and dissipated. And uh, But the air cool models almost always tend to run hot, slow down, and quit on you. And you're so much better off with a water cooled, which I'm going to bring up and show you here. But first of all, here's the patterns. This is one that I made quite a long while ago. Got a, a base pattern here with the uprights for the bearings and the pedestal to hold the uh, working end of it. Here's the split pattern that is used to make this working end and the displacer side here and the power side or piston here. Now this is a water-cooled engine that I'm going to show you and by water-cooled I mean we I took a copper tube here that was coiled up similar to this and uh, made a coil out of it and it was laid into the sand mold and the aluminum poured around it so this was incorporated into the casting and the results of that are such that you see uh, the ends of the tubes right here. So we can put water in one side and it will drain out the other side and it circulates around here and totally keeps this end cool and this end of course is hot. The important thing on a Stirling engine is that there's a differential hot and cold, or it would work in the reverse if we could make this end real cold and this end hot, but the practicality of it is that it's easier to make this the hot end. Now inside of here we have a displacer. And the displacer is nothing more than a hollow aluminum tube that moves back and displaces the air or the gas from one end to the other. Now if you watch my next video that's coming up in a while, I'm going to go into a great detail onto the workings of an engine and the theory and what actually makes them run. When you make your uh, Stirling engines, it's very necessary that you work precisely. They're much more difficult to make than a steam engine. A steam engine always runs. To be honest with you, any moron can build one because they will run. All you have to do is put a little bit more air pressure or steam pressure and overcome all your inaccuracies but these engines have to be built with a great de degree of accuracy and you should in fact have just a little bit of what I would call compression or bounce back and if you don't have that that means that your power piston here isn't accurate enough and it's either not going to run or it's not going to run very well. Now I'm going to come back in just a few moments and I'm going to run this one but I have to hook it up to the water and uh, then I will preheat this so it's uh, ready to run when we uh, resume. Okay, here's the complete setup. As you can see, I've got a pan of water, and there's a little pump in here that I bought at Walmart. I think it's used for little fountains and things, and the water is being pumped into the engine and then exited back into the pan. And if you follow those two tubes, you'll see that they are connected to the other side of the engine there where I showed you the tubes a few minutes ago and I've got a can of Sterno here which I call the poor man's napalm and I preheated this a little bit and we got it running and the beauty of this now is that it doesn't matter how hot I make it on the displacer end I can keep it cool over here which is where I want it to be cool and eventually the water will even heat up to the point where you can uh, put ice in it. But usually by then you're sick of running it. The session ends and 
there's no need for that but you could run it continuously also it can be run uh, near a sink directly from the tap water that concludes our little session now this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now